I'm Evangelist Charlotte Lumpkins, and welcome back to Freedom in Christ in the Kingdom of Heaven series. This is Shout It Out to the Rooftops Ministries, and boy, oh boy, do we have a topic for you. I hope you're following my other three videos, because we're going to continue where we left off, talking about the church, talking about Christ, His church, the leadership, and the coming judgment. Boy, I hope you're getting something out of this because you know what? I'm working really hard, thus saith the Lord, to make sure that his people get the message clear, that he's depending on his leadership that he chose. That's you and me, that's his beloved. Those are believers, born again, called to be disciples of Christ and to make disciples. I hope you are making disciples and I hope you're waiting for your reward when Jesus comes and those that have not, then they have no reward. Again, let us open in prayer. Thank you for joining me again. I am Charlotte Lumpkins, Evangelist Charlotte Lumpkins, and we're gonna invoke the Holy Spirit to be with us in this very important study time. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we welcome you in this space. Father, we need you now. We need you like never before, God, and you need leaderships. You need leaders, God, to step up in this time and to bring your people in. God, I know your word says that the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. And God, I know you, Jesus gave you the commandment to go and to make disciples of all nations. Oh God, I pray that my listener will know just what God is saying, speaking to them, to make disciples. That's the good work, to take care of the poor, to love those that are unlovable, to be kind, to be like Jesus. Lord, we invite your spirit here. Bless every listener and meet every need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God, the Lord Jesus gave us a commandment. He gave us a commandment. He said, love one another. And then we read in the previous video, it says, you know what? He wants us to take care of the poor. He wants us to feed. He wants us to give water. He wants us to be support. He wants us to love his children, all of them, no matter where they are or who they come from. And that's our job if you're a leader. In other words, if you're born again and you're called to be a disciple of Christ, he wants you to do your job. So let's pick up where we left off. We remember, just quick brief, that God required us to live a sound doctrine. And what did we talk about previously? False teachers. False teachers speaking false doctrines. And they said, we read the word that they were only out for the money. They weren't there to help the sheep. They weren't there to better their life. They weren't even there to tell them to obey God. Because guess what? They weren't even obeying God themselves. And that was in the previous video. Oh boy, I'm so glad you decided to join me because now this next one is talking about the judgment on leadership that's coming. Judgment means, here's your reward. You did good. Come sit at my table. Remember we opened with that? They have a blessing. The sheep on one side and the goats on the other. And then he said, what did you do for me? And if you did for me, if you fed and took care of me and visited me in prison, what did he say? Welcome into my kingdom. There you go. The scripture also says that those that did the Father's will got into the kingdom of heaven. You just can't be dropping name Jesus and dropping like you and him are high five buddies. No, you got to represent him. You got to do the work as him. Be his disciples. Okay, so we're going to open with um, the judgment on leadership and we're going to start with leaders are responsible for their sheep. Did you know that? Yes, they are. Leaders are responsible for the sheep. And we're going to go to Jeremiah. That's the Old Testament. If you don't have an Old Testament Bible, I have it with me. I'm going to take my time and I'm going to read what the Old Testament says. Jeremiah 23 verses 1 to 4. This is for you and me, shepherds, people who are ministers of God. Here we go. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. All right, this might not be Israel. This might not be on Jerusalem, but this is definitely us. We are the body of believers. He gave us leadership. He called us. Now let's see what he's talking to us as his people. Because you have scattered my flock 
and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I told you, I'm warning you. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. There you go. That might be an Old Testament scripture. That might be an Old Testament passage. But guess what? He's talking to us today. He's assigned us people that he wants us to help. He assigned us a ministry. He assigned us a work in his field. He did. Whatever that field of work God gave you to work in, I hope you've been steady at it, taking care of the sheep, taking care of the flock that he gave you, that he administered authority. Because of his authority, he passed that authority on to you. When he anointed the disciples, he gave them power to be his representatives. He gave us power by the Holy Spirit. I sure hope you're using your power for good to edify the body of Christ and not to tear it down. I hope you're using your authority that Christ called you to the ministry to be examples of Jesus and you're helping people and not discouraging them. I hope you're doing as much as you can for the coming Christ because he's bringing his reward with him. And we discussed that too. The next one is... Ezekiel 34, verses 1 to 8. In the Old Testament, Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 1 to 8. Okay, Old Testament again. I'm going to read it right from the Old Testament. Ezekiel 34. And this is about the leadership and their responsibilities. You might find yourself right in one of these pages we're sharing. Here we go. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man. Prophesy against the shepherds. Here we go. Prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to the shepherds of Israel. And I'm going to say the church who only take care of themselves. Here we go. Here's the warning. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with the wool and slaughter the choice animals. But you do not take care of your flock. Oh, my goodness. You have not strengthened the weak, nor healed the sick, nor bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered all over the mountains and on every hill. They were scattered over the whole earth, and no one searched or looked for them. Oh, my goodness. What do you think he's implying? What do you think he's talking to the leadership? Let's go on and find out. He says, therefore, shepherds, that's you. Hear the word of the Lord. As sure as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, because my flock lacks a shepherd, so has been, so has been plundered and has become food for all the wild animals because my shepherds did not search for my flock but cared for themselves rather than for my flock. Therefore, O shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign law says. I'm against the shepherds and will hold them accountable for my flock. I will remove them from tending the flock so that the shepherds can no longer feed themselves. I will rescue my flock from their mouth and it will no longer be food for them. There you go. Wow, that's a lot of scripture. Let us, let's see if we can shake that down so that we can understand it. The shepherds are supposed to be working for God. God placed them in that place of authority. God calls on them, prepared them. Some educated themselves. Some went all the way, probably got a PhD in theology. Some of them probably studied really hard at the best schools. And they have loans to pay back. They probably have um, family members that they brought from banks. Whatever they did to get their education, they were prepared. And then guess what? They started out their ministry doing good. 
probably a few years. They were making, they were becoming popular and then they became real popular and then they became real popular and then they took over and took off and they were no longer doing that beginning work. And God is saying in this video, come back to your first love, church. Come back to your first love. And that first love was the love of Christ and his people. You were ministering to his people. You were loving his people. You were putting the scriptures together with Jesus' walk. You were putting your walk together with Jesus. And guess what? You slipped away. You got into something really over your head. And now you don't even care about the lowest of low. You don't even want to talk to the lowest low. Everybody has to call and make their appointment with you. You can't even get close to them. I don't think you walked up to anybody on the street and said, Jesus loves you, brother, sister. Jesus loves you. Here's a meal. Jesus loves you. Let me take you and get you a cup of coffee. When is the last time you've seen anybody down at that area? You know that area of town and there's a church there. They might be giving them some sandwiches. They might be giving them some clothes, but guess what? I don't think they're in their buildings. I don't think they're in their buildings at all. At least where I've been, I ain't seen no homeless rolling up in there, getting a front seat to hear the ministry. No, we take it to them, that's true. But we ain't brought them in. And Jesus said, the Bible says, my shepherds, you have neglected my flock and they're scattered. They're on sidewalks, they're on park benches, they're sleeping in corners of stores. I've seen them, you've seen them, and boy, oh boy, where there's a church, where there's a, a, a hall for fellowship, wherever they are, they are not inside those buildings. In fact, when you walk by on Monday, there's a gate up there so tight, when you come back on Tuesday, that gate is still there. It might be open for Wednesday, but Thursday and Friday, there's locked up. I'm telling you, nobody walking by and finding an open church today. I don't think it's just COVID. It was before COVID, and God probably said in COVID, go home to your houses. You ain't needing these buildings, because when I see you in here, your heart is not after me. So guess what? We worshiping in the house now. How's that? But I believe God. He is not happy with his shepherds. So there's that. And now the next one is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, 1 to 4. Hebrews chapter 13 let me take my time i am excited about what the said the lord because this is for the leaders remember you leaders that's you and me who taught you the word of god think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith remember we said that god has given these people under your jurisdiction God's word told them to be you. God's word tells them to listen to what you're leading them to be about and do. And if you're not telling them to repent, and if you're not telling them to turn from their sins, if you're not telling them to stop living in that way that they're doing and they're harming themselves and their family, and if you have not warned them, then guess what? That's on you because you haven't done the job. Because God told them, you got to remember your leaders and you got to obey them. The problem is, is the leaders ain't obeying God. You know, they're not obeying this word. They went off the wrong way. They're doing their thing. Remember we said the shepherds, they're not doing what God has told them to do. Some of them have went off so far left, so politically left, so adamantly anti the poor, anti broken, anti homeless, anti immigrant, Oh my goodness, the scene is so bad in some places. But yet, they keep saying that name. And yet, they are no more following him. Jesus, the Bible says, you worship me with your lips, but your heart. You haven't even given a cup of water to a stranger, the Lord says. And your heart is far from me. Oh God, help us, Lord, help us, Lord. The next one, God put them in charge of directing people. Hebrews 12a, Hebrews 12a, Hebrews 13, verse 7, Hebrews 13, verse 7, here we go. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, 
So do not be attracted by strange new ideas or strength or your strength comes from your strength comes from God's grace, not from rules about food which which don't help those who follow him. See, you're following Jesus. You're not following the text or the conversation of this world. You're not following the culture. Jesus is the one you're following, okay? Don't forget that. Romans, I mean Hebrews 13, 17. Okay, obey your spiritual leaders, God told them, and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls and they are accountable to God. I told you leaders, I told you, you are accountable for God. You got to be on your job doing what God had you to do and that is to mind the souls of people. You got to take care of them. Make sure that they're on the right path. Make sure that they're doing what God's word says. That was the shepherd's job in the Old Testament. And that's your job. He called you. He ordained you. You sent you to school. You got your certificate. You got your degrees. And then you got a great church. Or you got a great ministry. And the poor down here ain't heard from you yet. When is the last time you've seen anybody on those ministries down there, up there, come down in your neighborhood? Think about it. When is the last time you've seen a truck? from some place will open up when the back of it is food and groceries. You know the last place you saw that? At the food pantry, the government places. Ain't nobody come down to them. And that's why the Lord's upset. He says, he tells the listeners, the believers, give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be for your benefit. See, beloved leaders, God told your people your constituents to obey you. My question is, what are you telling them now? And who are you telling them to obey? And the question is, are you obeying God even before you can get them to correct? Are you come and correct yourself? Oh my goodness. Let's go on. <clears throat> Acts 20, verse 28. Acts 20, verse 28. Acts 20, verse 28. Here it is. Acts 20. This is the New Testament. I'm going to go really slow for you. So God yourselves and God's people feed and shepherd God's flock. That's for my leaders. His church purchased with his own blood over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as elders. I know that false teachers are like Vicious wolves will come in among you after I leave, not sparing the flock. Even some men from your own group will rise up and distort the truth in order to draw a following. It says, watch out. Did you understand what the Bible just said? You who are leaders, this is talking to you. He's called you. He knows there's some false people out there not obeying, but he don't want you to follow them. He wants you to stay on task. You're ministering to the least, the last, the lost, the rejected, and the despised. That's the body of Christ. He asks you to love your neighbor. He asks you to take care of those in your fellowship. That's what he wants you to do. And don't get distracted or distorted. What that other group is doing, he knows there's false teachers, but he's telling you, don't go run after them because they're going to get you in all kind of trouble with God. And you don't want to be in trouble with God. You want to stay with the love of Jesus Christ and let the Holy Spirit build you up. It says, even some men from your own group, from your own school where they graduated, some of them came from your own background, maybe grew up in the same church where you did. And it says, some of them from your own group will rise up and distort the truth in order to draw a following. And then we read why they wanted to draw that following. It was for financial gain. Oh my goodness. It wasn't for souls. It wasn't for building the kingdom of heaven. It wasn't to bring them to Jesus. It was for financial gain. That was never the intention of God's people. That was never intention of God's leaders to be financially set. We wanted you to be eternally set. Heaven bound. Kingdom of heaven. Not financially set. That wasn't your job. But like he said, they turned away from the truth and they went after the money. Okay, and then the Bible says, watch out. Let's do the next one. Oh, my goodness. Watchmen to, is to show which is the right way. There are watchmen out there. You were supposed to be a watcher. 
And you were supposed to show the people the direction. You were supposed to point out the way. Beloved, we're going to come back. We're going to talk about the job of you who are called, the leaders, to point out the direction for the sheep to go. And I pray that when you come back, you will hear the rest of this video and you will hear what thus saith the Lord about leadership. I'm Evangelist Shala Lumpkins. Thank you for joining me. Come on back because we got more of Christ, the church leadership, and the coming judgment. Welcome back.